let's talk about everything that everyone's been talking about. Have you guys seen this? This is obviously the news that's on the docket at the moment that's been spreading up Wi-Fi in the last hour or so. Uh, courtesy of TMZ, Dana White nightclub fight with wife on New Year's Eve. Dana says there's no excuse. <laughs> Honestly, man, are we surprised that Dana White hits his wife? Honestly, are we surprised by this? Can we say this? Like, let's be honest. Again, I'm not the most balls deep UFC fan out there. Some people might describe me as a casual. I'm just somebody that's a fan of the sport from afar, from a just a, you know, a nice loose way. I watch most of the main cards. I like watching the prelims. I like watching the, you know, I like watching the prelims just to kind of catch some up and coming fighters that I probably haven't heard of beforehand, following some of the news on social media, especially places like Twitter and stuff. It's pretty decent. And some of the interviews are really good. Uh, that Brett, um, Yakamato, is it Yakamato or Ukomoka? I've got his name that does some stuff on PT. He's really good in terms of interviews. Obviously, Ariel Hawani is awesome. Luke Thomas does some great work. Um, there's the other guy who I like as well. He's got the logo with a boxing glove and a feather. He's pretty good on, on YouTube. It's a really decent sport to follow, especially if you've done some some of it. I did some Muay Thai, did some MMA on like a Groupon little deal thing, right? And I obviously felt like Conor McGregor after a couple of months of hitting mitts and doing some sparring and regular drills. So clearly it captured my imagination. But one thing I've noticed from looking from afar has been that Dana White is clearly, 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 clearly holding the sport back in my opinion, always has been. Now, maybe the sport is being held back in its own regard because, you know, the pay structure and the pay in general is just awful. And I feel like if you're in America and you're having to compete with sports like basketball and American football and baseball even, it's just really difficult to attract top-level talent to come and commit themselves to a life of getting kneed and elbowed and punched and submitted and strangled and stuff in an octagon with another man in underwear if you're not willing to pay them the going rate of other athletes and other sports it doesn't have to match it but somewhere around the region but the fact that these UFC guys aren't necessarily even paid a base um, it's a base salary but they're not paid that much in general it just makes it difficult I would imagine for them to attract top level talent of course it's improved over the years because there's still an opportunity for glory especially if you are able to crack the top 15 rankings and even you know have the ability to grab the belt there is big money to be made but overall for a kind of journeyman fighter at the UFC you're essentially working a regular job you know uh, in terms of a salary just the other day we heard Paddy Pemblet say he got 12 and 12 for you know a fight that he had maybe a couple of fights ago or something along those kind of lines that Paddy Pemblet is very 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 well known right very popular despite everything that's going with Ariel Hawani he's got a lot of online clout he's clearly got a big following here in the UK he's clearly somebody that's super entertaining when he does fight even if he's not the best um, in terms of technique or defense right it's not necessarily going to get him to the point where he's going to be able to win a title anytime soon with his chin in the air but still he's very entertaining and you would imagine he's someone that's definitely worth um, his price of admission if someone like him is getting deals for 12 and 12, just imagine what the other people are getting. And 12 and 12, if you don't know, and I've only just found this out recently, is basically you get 12 to turn up and 12 if you win, which, you know, is crappy money, 24 grand, because, you know, from the amount you have to pay your coaches to you have to pay your food person, your strength and conditioning person, whatever else you need in terms of money, it's just not that much when it comes down to it. So um, I feel like all that stuff has kind of been... I'm sure it's a UFC top brass decision, but I feel like Dana White's arrogance and refusal to even, you know, try to make the pay a little bit more equitable or get the UFC fighters to actually be employees instead of being independent crop dressers. All this stuff is really, I feel like, left a sour taste in the mouth when it comes to Dana White and the UFC. And also, his general just combative nature he has with the fighters. He just tends to have, like, favourites and... He antagonizes fighters, and if a fighter that he doesn't like has the belt, he makes it very known in terms of his displeasure. Just a very unlikable and really hard to root for guy. Just it, really. I know a lot of his stick that he gets is maybe overblown, but he just doesn't come across as the bestest guy in the world, which has always really made me consider why he's such good friends with Joe Rogan. Because Joe Rogan, you would imagine, if Dana White worked in the comedy industry and he treated comedians the way Dana White treats fighters. I don't think Joe would be that pleased, you'd imagine. But, you know, there's a little bit of a distance there because of the love he has for the UFC, not more, for, not for Dana White. He obviously came into it because of the UFC. And of course, no, he came into it because his love was martial arts. But then him being friends with Dana White is why he went to the UFC. So maybe his loyalty is always going to be with the UFC and martial arts. But 
I always find that very interesting that they're kind of close friends and you know Joe does go out his way not to really comment on fighter pay and whatnot but that for me has always been my main issue with the guy his favoritism with certain fighters the fact that he antagonizes and clearly picks it the fact that he's he's a main character also it doesn't really make sense for me um he kind of makes himself part of the conversation way too often um carries himself a little you know pats his chest in the air way too high personally for me being somebody that's you know leading a group of you know trained killers it feels a bit weird but hey maybe because of the money position he feels protected but i'm not gonna lie i'm not surprised by his headline i i don't know what to say i'm not surprised that dana white would be a guy that would you know hit his wife i'm just not surprised unfortunately um this is a coach article tmz it says dana white and his wife got into a physical altercation with each other on new year's eve stunning onlookers in a crowded Cabo san lucas nightclub an incident Dana White says regretfully fueled by booze. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just explain to us why it happened. That's okay. And then you can get on with your job. Yeah, sure. The UFC Honcho and N White, who've been married for 26 years. <laughs> That's only funny because of what, you know, happened between Dana White and Brendan when Brendan exposed um, the fact that uh, allegedly Dana White may have also slept with, uh, what's her name? Ronda Rousey when he said, oh, we are also. Um, what do you think? What do you say? Uh, what's that term when you slip with somebody else? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, or maybe it was somebody else. But I got the assumption that he meant Ronda, Ronda Rousey. But even though you know, there's loads of people posting clips of him on Reddit's and stuff at you know uh, casinos somewhere. You know, um, with the company of ladies of the night. I see an Eskimo brother. Sorry, with ladies of the night. You know, he clearly doesn't give a crap about being caught outside with women that don't look like his wife. I've not really seen him hanging out with his wife too often. Maybe the coverage hasn't been there, but it's not been a constant thing. Um, so yeah, it's just hilarious to see this. 26 years, you know. Um, the couple and their group were in a VIP area above the dance floor when White um, leaned over to say something to Anne. She reacted by slapping him across the face. Dana immediately slapped her back in the face before friends jumped in and pulled them apart. And it all played out in plain view of the pages down below. So the fact that it happened like that would lead you to believe that most likely they probably have a lot of physical altercations. This isn't the first time they've both put hands on each other. Let's just say that. To be charitable to both people. What well, eyewitnesses in the club tell TMZ, Dana and Anne both seemed heavily intoxicated prior to the violence and the video seems to bear that out. Because things went to zero to 100 in an instant, seemingly no reason further. It, we are told the conflict was all over in less than a minute. Look at Dana. <laughs> we spoke to Dana about the incident and he admits that he and Anne had been drinking heavily but quickly adds that no excuse for him to go physical he told us you've heard me say for years there's never an excuse for a guy to put his hands on a woman and now here I am on TMZ talking about it and I bet he said that with a little smile imagine being the guy that says that sort of stuff knowing full well the thing that's funny about it is that he's trying to make it seem like this is a one-off but for me personally having seen the video which I have here this doesn't look like a one-off to me. This looks like somebody who's had altercations with his wife in the past and this is how he's dealt with them. Or when he's had, or when his wife has said something that he doesn't like, this is what's basically occurred. This is only my opinion. I'm just alleged. Don't come out here and sue me. So let's play the video here. This is a clip taken from, I think TMZ took this. Just to sound off so I don't want to get claimed. You see them arguing there in the VIP section. She slaps him and he slaps her back push each other they get split up they're tussling the only thing i can say to be again to be charitable to dana white the slap didn't look super hard it looked like she slapped him way harder than he did i know it's difficult to say that because she's a woman but she really swung her arm back to hit him and he kind of just reflexively sort of slapped her but my main issue with this is that this is his wife <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is his wife if this is some random Jesse, right? Some random lady of the night, maybe there's a, maybe you could argue it. Maybe you could argue that instant reaction of like, I don't know you. Why are you hitting me? Why are you touching me for? Right? Because in that respect, that whole conversation about men not hitting women should probably be out the window. If it's just a stranger comes and hits you. But if it's somebody that's your friend, somebody you're dating, somebody that's your wife, the mother of your children, you'd imagine the physical part of things would be something that would be the last, maybe not even the last, the, not even the last, it, it, it wouldn't even be in your mind. You just want to restrain them and like shout at them and maybe, you know, get really shouty and scream in their face like to calm down or something. But I wouldn't, wouldn't think my first reaction would be to hit them personally, unless my relationship was always like that. Do you know what I mean? People saying, yeah, 
that's the only thing I can think of. Like my relationship has always been like that. Whenever we have conflict, we end up slapping each other. But I can't think of any other scenario in my entire life where hitting a woman like this, especially somebody that you're married to, makes any kind of sense. It just doesn't to me. It really, really doesn't. Like, I don't see anything that could make this. Like, what does she say? Oh, why are you looking at that woman? Who are you texting? Why can't we go home yet? Can I order another drink? I wanted a Birkin in this color, not in that color. When's my Ferrari truck coming? It's not even out yet, but I want it now. Like, what could they be arguing about in a nightclub? A couple that's been married for 26 years that would need them to fight like this and sometimes i'd imagine as well if, if you've seen people who've actually been don't know if you guys have seen this before but i've seen i've seen relationships people have been in relationships for a long time who argue a lot towards the end of them maybe breaking up sometimes what they'll do because they're embarrassed about how it looks they'll usually leave where you're at and go argue somewhere else so like you see somebody has been in a long relationship, relationship and it's getting to the end where they're being very toxic to each other and arguing and they don't know how to break up yet right what they would do is that they would like pull each other to the corners and like shower each other and point and it'd be like a weird silent kind of fight but it would never get to a physical part of it it would never get physical in the slightest way shape or form so it makes complete sense that in this regard i think the ease at which this happened on both sides is definitely telling me that these guys hit each other often but it's more concerning to me that Dana is hitting his wife in public in a Las Vegas nightclub like this. This shows this guy has got a bit of a screw loose. Like, let's be real. And it also is quite interesting that the same guy who kind of bullies and intimidates fighters with fighter pay bullies and ostracizes journalists who basically have to kind of cower at his feet if they want access to whatever certain things. And the guy that essentially acts as if like no one can touch him is also the same guy that goes home and hits his wife in it. It's no surprise, really. A, a man with such with like the principle sorry the the moral compass of <laughs> you know the worst person you can think of will be someone doing this it makes complete sense so I, I wonder what john jones is thinking that's what i'm thinking what's john jones thinking right now john jones must be laughing his head off watching this sort of stuff because he must be like it must be like that's that kind of meme right? that spider-man meme where everyone's pointing at each other but it also might explain why dana has been so forgiving and willing to turn a blind eye to you know some ufc fighters really horrendous outside of the octagon accusations or you know uh, charges and stuff he's able to turn a blind eye because he knows behind closed doors or away from the cameras he gets up to some mad stuff also he knows that so who is he to tell people to not do x y and z that might explain the reason why he's like that honestly because you think of something like a greg hardy when he came to the ufc it was just such an unnecessary um level of scrutiny that they didn't have to, that ufc didn't need to have he was never going to be a champion he was never going to be good enough to even crack the top 15 he was never going to be good enough to just be on a roster flat out so why go all that way for somebody who's got convicted of you know domestic violence to the point where he got kicked out of the nfl to bring him into ufc just for what what did he do he ended up getting you know kicked out anyway recently but it was such a waste of time and I feel like a lot of that has to come from somebody having, you know, somebody like this who hits their wife would be also willing and open to maybe hiring a person like Greg Hardy and making and being willing to turn a blind eye to all the things that he's done. But this is wild. <laughs> this legitimately is wild. Now, Disney does own the UFC now, ESPN, Disney, whatever. So there is some conversation out there. Some people have been accusing in the, um, some people have been saying in the, um, in the chat that Disney might fire him. I've always said for the longest time that I think if the UFC does want to progress to the next level, they have to get rid of Dana White and they have to get to a point where they're paying fighters a fair wage and they're not independent contractors. But you have to get rid of Dana White to do that because he's going to be one of the people that's going to be staunchly against it because, you know, he's just a bit of a knob that way. Um, and also, he's just too much of a Vince McMahon main character energy for a sporting organization. He's someone that's willing to kind of be the corporate quote unquote shield type guy and just kind of, you know, pop out what needs to be done and just disappear into the distance when, you know, it doesn't need to be heard. But clearly, Dana White loves loves the attention loves the limelight in a classic promoter sense of the thing and the only way they're going to move forward i think as organizations turn again to the next level they've done well so far in spite of you know the organization being run a bit dodge but if they want to get to the next level you have to get rid of dana but dana also has done un, you know immeasurable good to the sport to, to the organization right he's kind of definitely been one of the people that are responsible for the what the ufc is successful at this point besides you know the first tier brothers and the money they obviously put in it and whatnot but he's definitely you know contributed his fair amount but next stage wise you can't be having something like this is this so what well, this is all fake if that's true that's still a bit weird 
using your wife as promo for your slap contest is very, very strange, personally for me. Someone saying that's true. Someone saying Dana White said, oh, it's not. He's using his promo for his flight league. Okay, let's see. Let's go to Dana White's Twitter page. If that's true, he's admitted that. That's very, very bizarre. Um, your wife being up for it also is... Oh, okay, cool. Sorry. I was just about to check. <laughs> I was about to check Dana White's account. Look, what did he say anyway? What's Dana White saying on his Twitter? I'm about to check it to say, like, did Dana White actually say that? That would be actually mad if he did. But I find using your wife um, to promote a slap contest thing is really, really crazy. But let's just see what he said anyway. I'm curious to see what the man has said himself regarding the whole entire affair. But this is incredible. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm sure maybe later on we might hear some music. So it'd be interesting to see how, how the UFC does, does, you know, respond to this. Because surely you can't be having this. Surely. Surely not. But I don't know. Maybe I'm in the maybe I'm in the minority of thinking he's gonna keep his job. He'd be completely fine. I think if he didn't get fired or sacked for the other things that he said prior, I don't see why they'd wanna come after him now for this. But let's see what he's posted on his own Twitter account. Has he made any public statement about it? No, nothing. So just the TMZ thing that he put out. But yeah, um anything else said on the TMZ before I move on? Um What do you say here? I don't wanna play the video because it's probably end up making getting claimed. What did he actually say? Um he said that he's embarrassed by this horrible incident and he and Anne have apologized to each other. He says they're good, but their biggest concern is now they're three kids with whom they're really disgusted by. <laughs> Imagine being Dana White's kids and checking into social media thinking, oh, here we go again. Everyone's going to be harassing me because my dad's flipping awful. And then instead of that, you get handed by people telling you, hey, have you seen a video of your dad beating your mum up in a nightclub? Oh, Jesus. Meanwhile, Anne tells TMZ Sports, Dan and I have been married for almost 30 years. To say that is out of character of him is understatement. <laughs> Sorry, Anne. I don't... You know, also, this is the thing that's to be... To, just to kind of kind of nip this in the bud. This is why I refrain from talking about things concerning domestic violence in general. Because unless the person who's the victim is ready to actually move on and lead that relationship, more often than not, they're usually going to go back. And you can make yourself look like a real fool if you try and get in the middle of it and try and save the person um, because usually they're going to end up going back with that person because clearly either they are, um, you know, mentally in a place where they can't leave or it's this relationship where, unfortunately, it's so toxic that this is what they do behind closed doors on on the regular. And I think that's the case personally for me. Given what Dana White's personality is like, I can't imagine he has just some like meek version of himself, of a wife at home. I'm sure it's a spicy relationship. And for sure, this happens only often. But I don't know. It's just wild to think this is crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just think it's insane. This guy legitimately beat his wife in public at a New Year's Eve party in Las Vegas. <laughs> Nothing like this has ever happened before. We don't believe you, Anne. Come on, Anne. We don't believe you. Don't even say this. Unfortunately, we are both drinking too much on New Year's Eve and things got out of control. Um, but I legitimately don't think I've ever, I'd have ever i ever get to a point where drunkenly I want to hit somebody I'm dating or somebody I'm married to, somebody I have kids with. It's like those guys on Call of Duty who'd say, oh, the reason why I said nigger on a stream was because I was frustrated. I think that's what PewDiePie said, right? That's a standard white guy streamer excuse when they say nigger in the stream. Oh yeah, I was I was flustered. I was confused. Why is nigger the first word that comes out of your brain whenever you're under pressure and confused? Why is that the first word? Like, you know what I mean? That's pure cap. <laughs> pure lies. So this is all nonsense. Like we know you. It's not the first time you guys have hit each other or the first time you felt, you know, um Dana White's five fingers aside of the face. No way. Unfortunately, we're both drinking too much. We talked this through as a family and apologize to each other. I just hope people respect our privacy. <laughs> respect our privacy? Excuse me, miss. <laughs> we just saw you get slapped in HD. Like, excuse me? Privacy? He's giving interviews on TMZ about slapping you in a nightclub. Jesus Christ, man. Jesus Christ. But yeah, I'm I'm so curious. I'm so eager to find out what Brendan Shaw has to say about this. I can't wait to hear what Brendan has to say about this. Because Brendan's been trying to do this weird thing where he's trying to suck up to Dana 
to be his friend, but he's also done this thing where he fires back and tries to make you know weeks worth of content out of Dana replying to him and saying the I think Dana said like three words to him in it in this whole exchange. Uh, um, that makes sense or something, right? That makes sense. I think it's three, three words. Everything else has been like innuendos or stuff that's been suggested or hinting at sniggers, but he said three words, Eric Tim, and Brendan stretched that for a whole entire week. But again, before that, he was trying to suck up to him. So I wonder what he's going to do now. Will, will Brendan use his opportunity to really show that he's loyal to Dana and defend him in public and try and get his good graces? Or will he do the pylon and say, domestic abuse are... Um, hitter of women should not be in charge of the UFC, a disgrace to the organization. I wonder what he's going to do. I'm really curious. How will Brendan approach this? Because this is a real prime opportunity to either kick the man that you hate, you know, while he's down, or to try and, um, what's that word called? To try and, um, to try and earn his lawyer, earn his favor, sorry, by, kind of sucking up to him and making excuses for something that's inexcusable what is he going to do i'm really curious what is he going to do what is he going to do um but hey it continues obviously it's egregious you know hitting your wife in public hitting your wife in any way shape or form is crazy i think you know there's nothing in that interaction for me i don't think there's anything unless legitimately like i'm saying what could she have said to him that would have made you know hit okay for him to hit her legit what do you think could have been said I can't imagine it. I can't imagine anything that would warrant him slapping his own wife in public like that. That's just so embarrassing. That's the thing that's about it as well. It's really embarrassing for her. Um, obviously, it makes him look like an absolute beast, but it's embarrassing for her. Like, legit. Like, you wouldn't want to embarrass your wife that way. You wouldn't even want to. That's the thing I'm thinking of. When, when, you, when, you, when you're out with somebody that you like, especially someone that's your wife, and they're getting too drunk and they're getting too belligerent, too violent, and they're saying crazy shit. You just don't want them to look bad. So usually what you do if you're a stand-up dude is that you'll try and get them home. So even if something like this does happen, it happens behind closed doors, but you don't want to have them looking crazy in the club. You don't want to embarrass them that way. So I can't even imagine a scenario where this makes sense because clearly he wasn't trying to de-escalate things either. He was just standing there in the pocket waiting to hit back. And if anything, his slap wasn't that great. She actually winded her one back. I mean, she wanted him to feel it. Um, but again, like what could warrant this? I don't really know. It looks absolutely insane. They're there. And it's funny that somebody happened to record it just at the road. Maybe that's the only thing I can be suspicious about it. To be to be charitable to Dana White, to be like a Barstool sports employee who kind of is in Dana White's pocket, right? If I want to be a Barstool sports employee, the only thing I can say to give Dana a bit of to give it a bit of rope right or to kind of cope and to put sort of a cap for Ben and for Dana will be to say that this video seems to start exactly when they get into an argument so what you're watching the whole entire time you're in there and your phone was recorded the whole entire time that's the only thing I can think of that's the only thing I can think of but hearing the mother of your children in a club like that like she's some any skank is just wild even in any skank I wouldn't do it to and I wouldn't legislate for <sighs> this is crazy man this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> legit crazy, man. Honestly, legit one of the craziest things I've seen in my life. <laughs> oh, but it definitely explains a lot. It explains so much about him and how he's able to turn a blind eye to certain fighters' indiscretions outside of the octagon and how he's able to make excuses for the most inexcusable things and doesn't seem to have any moral, principle, ethical compass. You know, if he makes money, that's all that matters. There's nothing else that's sort of his guiding principle in terms of anything else. If I mean, that's, that's it. As long as it's not illegal, or it's kind of, you know, even the legality is kind of a... You know, is a vague thing you'd say maybe in the inner white's eyes, allegedly. But I don't know. I don't know. I think it's crazy. I think the whole thing is insane. Um, whether anything happens to him, I very, very, very much doubt it. I think it'll kind of get swept under the rug and he'll be able to continue doing what he does best, you know, saving the UFC a bunch of money, making loads of money for himself and just keeping the wheels turning on the bus round and bloody round. Yeah, just gonna go. Six year old in the club is embarrassing enough, in it. Say that again. What are people saying here in the chat here? Uh, Dana White hit his wife. She said he's fucking illegal. Service saying Dana needs to bear help, and you can get fifty percent off. Okay, jokes there. 
more jokes from server <laughs> server design the thoughts <laughs> the thoughts of server design do not reflect the thoughts of the stream you know what I mean? Let, let him cook in it. Let him cook, but I did not go sign that. Eddie D says Shaw will make an entire show about it. It's comparable to 9 11. Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing see that. Dicey, dicey, Dana. Exactly. Definitely dicey, dicey. Trick her because we can't say an F anymore. Uh, MMA Nut says Dana did what I've wanted to do to my girlfriend for years. Dana is a hero. Oof. I don't know, man. I don't know. Slapping someone like that, it's like, it's like, has, it has to come with some level of rage. Like, legit, like, shut the fuck. You know what I mean? I, I don't think I've ever got to that point with any partner to, that I want to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't get that serious really with me. I don't feel, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm unconventional, but I feel like if you get to a point where you're loving your partner and you display your affection and part of your love language is clenching your fist or opening your palm and hitting them with it, I don't necessarily think that's love. And I think maybe you should break up and maybe find some other people to date personally for me i don't think that's really any evidence of love in any way shape or form maybe i'm just being you know maybe i'm being a p word or whatnot but for me personally i'd much rather be with somebody that i actually enjoy being with as opposed to every time they speak out of line i want to drop kick them or something or push them into traffic that's not necessarily love to me <laughs> just me just me speaking for me just me i've never really understood it i've had many friends that have had relationships where they're pushing girls out of the car you know that kind of relationship i've had a relationship like that where they get in arguments where guys are in the car and they push them out of the car they slam the door they're shouting throughout the entire house they're throwing stuff out the window when you start doing all that toxic stuff for me it's just a sign that it's meant to be ending that's not a sign of love how do you work through someone you know burning your clothes pouring stuff you know stuff over your stuff um cutting your tires scratching your car up um, spitting on you, all these things. How do you get over that the next day? I don't know. Personally, for me, I don't know. Maybe the sex has to be really amazing for it to excuse that. But for me, I think it's just it's proof that you're not compatible as people. Because I feel like if that person wasn't your partner, boyfriend, or girlfriend, that was just a friend, you wouldn't be their friend anymore. If you met your friend, right? If you end your, if you met your friend, think about this. If you met your friend that you like go to go bars with, and like to go restaurants with, like to go to cinemas with, and every time you met and you had a disagreement, you went to blows, surely that's not your friend anymore. Surely after three or four of those occasions where you're meant to go to the shopping mall and hang out and then go to the movies to watch something and then you're in the aisles literally scrapping every time, surely after the third time, you're just not going to be their friend anymore because it's exhausting. You're covered in flipping popcorn and warm Coca-Cola and you know you stink like you know cinema carpets and you get escorted out, or, you, or sometimes you end up in jail because of the fight, kind of spills out into the foyer. Like, you just want to you just want to not be their friend anymore. So why would you tolerate that with somebody that you're sleeping with? It makes no sense. But hey, who am I in it? Who am I? I don't know anything. I'm just a random guy from East London talking out my arsehole. What do I 